Hi everyone, it's Lynn Smythe from The Creative Cottage. Thank you so much for stopping by my YouTube channel. I hope you're all having a great day. Today, I'm going to be doing an unboxing of some craft supplies. I think I got these all on eBay and some auctions. I also have a bundle coming from shopgoodwill.com so I seem confused <laughs> um, I just uh, I, I don't know if you've been watching my other videos you know I used to make my own jewelry CB jewelry fused glass jewelry macrame jewelry and I'm probably not going to get back to doing that type of stuff because it's um, you know CBs are quite small and um, I'm looking for something that's going to be a little bit easier to do so I thought with all this jewelry I'm getting in a lot of times I'll have loose beads or items that go into crafts or sometimes I'll just get a bunch of pendants without change. And I just thought uh, I could start doing some basic jewelry making, you know, like the little wire wrapped loops, the little king, little gemstone charms off of a chain bracelet or something. So I'm going to just go through everything really quickly. Oh, I'd love to hear in the comments, do you make jewelry um are you a jewelry maker or do you like using any of your crafting items for arts and crafts projects the need sewing or macrame or eating i would love to hear in the comments so this lot this is actually three lots this small lot of chain and then this is two lots i got from the same or two auctions I won from the same person, so they stuck them in one box. And this is all just chain, just um, bulk chain. So what I plan on doing is, you know, depending if I'm making a necklace or a bracelet, cut an appropriate length and then add a clasp and then put the little beaded loops. You know, those little dangly bracelets should have gotten one a finished one to show you what I'm talking about so a couple kinds of chain it's cool 72 inches per package this silver tone and here's a finer gold tone chain how much is in this one 100 inches and oh I like that style of chain it's 47 inches And the thing I like about uh, doing this kind of bracelet with these loops, you can really make the bracelet fit kind of one size fits all. It just depends on where you attach the clasp and how big it is. Yeah, so this is another gold tone one, 75 inches. This is a thicker chain. Um, I guess I could still use it for bracelets, but probably might use this for necklaces. 80 inches. So I'm going to have a nice variety. Ooh, this is really fine. Something this fine, you could even use in like um, earrings, you know, just for a little decorative look to some chain fringe. Two meters. Oh, 6.56 feet. And the funny thing is, years ago, I used to have a bead store, so I used to have all this stuff. I used to buy this stuff wholesale, but hmm, it was a long time ago. And my daughter was barely walking and now she's in her late 20s. Here's a big chunky chain. This is probably too big for bracelets, so I definitely use it in some necklace projects. 52 inches. And this is all new, so I don't know if somebody had a store that they closed and they're just trying to get rid of it. So I got a pretty good deal, but new. Ooh, really chunky chain. Yeah. I think there are two packages in here. Might be two packages. 21 inches. Well, that would be a, a necklace then. 21 inches. All I have to do is put a clasp and then hang whatever little beads and charms off of the chain that I want. And got the same thing in the silver tone. Again, it looks, I see two tags. So I'm assuming two sections of that large chain and then the last chain in this bundle is this one another silver tone 80 inches 
So I think I've got enough chain to do some projects for a while. <laughs> this is crazy, you know, when you go into Michael's or Joann's or Hobby Lobby's. Some of those prices are getting ridiculous. It's just like, wow. Like $100 to make one single necklace. So now I'm going to do this box, which is two lots of beading supplies, bead and jewelry supplies that I got from the same dealer. Yay, I'm out of this. I still have a few beads in my own stash, but I have run out of the beading wire. So I've got a spool of the gold tone and a spool of the silver tone. I have some crimps, but I'm hoping this bundle is going to have crimps in it too since I've got the beading wire. So that's a different look um, compared to the little loops and charms hanging from the um, chain. The bead line is for just straight bead stringing. So that's always a good supply to have on hand. And I don't even know my top again. Let's see. Start with this baggie. In some of these mixed jewelry bundles, I'll get a lot of the stretchy cord bracelets. And I'm always so worried about the stretchy cord, especially if it's an older piece of jewelry, because you never know how long how old the pieces are you're getting in the bundles. That elastic um, seems to get brittle after a while. It loses its stretchability or its ability to snap back. So with all of those stretchy cord bracelets, I always recommend just restringing them or just harvesting the beads to use in other projects. So that's where this beadalon wire would come into work. So instead of having a stretchy bracelet, I would put like a toggle clasp I think toggle clasps are easy to put on for bracelets. I know some clasps, some bracelets are so tiny I can barely get them on and off. So I'm just going to go through this baggie real quick. I think it's all strands of glass beads. This is nice, different sizes. So I'll be able to use all this in loads of projects. Um, some just amber colored beads. Again, I plan on doing mostly the the chain bracelets and necklaces where instead of solid um, strings of beads, you would just have like little individual, little hanging kind of charms. Who's that? Hilda and Joe. Yeah, I reckon, recognize Blue Moon beads and Hilda and Joe. Probably bought them in the craft stores. Here's another strand of the crystal beads, glass beads, same as the black, just different sizes. Kind of got a little AB coating on them. Ooh, look at these big ones. Big pink crystal rondelles. Again, you know, if you're to add up all the individual packages of beads, I'm sure this is hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars because this stuff. Is pricey. Just the beetle on itself. I, this, let's see. This is a 30 foot spool and a 100 foot spool. I think the 30 foot spool, like $15 in the stores. I remember the 100 foot ones, like $30 or more. Just crazy. I could be wrong with the prices. I don't know. But <laughs> it's not money. Here's the same sort of bead, uh, just smaller size. So those would work well together. Kind of that rose quartz colored glass. And my cat is at it again. Say hello. She's jumping up on the back of my chair. Hang on. I gotta get her off. I'll throw you out. Nice cat, her name is Shadow. She's just curious. I think she just turned one year old. Um, She's rescue kitty, so I don't know exactly when she was born, but I got her in November and we guesstimated. Um, she's around five or six months old at the time, so yeah, she's about a year old. This is a hank of bronze colored glass sea beads. These make good spacers for using between bigger beads. Again, I don't really do a lot with the sea beads anymore because they're so tiny, but as long as I'm not trying to do the bead weaving or loom weaving, peyote stitch, and that type of thing, I think I'll be okay. You know, if I put them on a head pin in between other beads. Another strand of the crystal AB bicone beads. And 
big glass be black glass beads. And then two strands. Oh, nope. Hang on. Oh, there's another crystal strand. Let's focus. There we go. <laughs> And we've got these. If you would focus. Oh my goodness. There we go. Those are fun. Like they're kind of clear with a uh, black center and then swirls of gold and white. And then these are good spacer beads. These are metal beads. Got some weight to them. But these are great to use in between beads. Oh, I got some of the rhinestone spacers too. Kind of gold, antique gold, silver, and a copper color. Nice. I barely made a dent in my bead stash. I don't know what I was thinking. I think, oh, I'll just make a couple of bracelets the next thing you know. Hmm. Just opened a whole, whole new business. <laughs> I have to hire some people to help me make all this jewelry. <laughs> all good and this next little package that was wrapped in bubble wrap that's what this is here we'll just go through here and see what oh and then there's two plastic bags inside the bubble wrap so this looks like coordinated colors of beads so if you're doing a um, project like a bracelet necklace earrings it looks like they've got all the colors and different sizes all um, picked out for you. It's kind of nice. So it's purples and lavenders. Here's some kind of smoky gray colors. Cool. And some frosted red beads. And the nice thing is you just can mix and match all these different colors together. Whatever floats your boat. Um, this is all one type of bead. The amber faceted same thing same type of bead and the kind of pink quartz or rose quartz color and in the crystal color so that's a nice size for bracelets uh, yeah so they don't get too heavy or bulk bulky And if you don't uh, make different arts and crafts projects with your um, craft items, do you sell the craft bundles? I know I see a lot of people on YouTube. Um, they put a lot of pieces in crafts. You know that's popular. Ooh, these are nice, kind of bronzy color. And got these smaller package of kind of smoky gray and black and I hope these are glass pearls they feel heavier glass pearls and some bronze beads not a huge fan of the pearlized beads but I think the glass pearls are okay they can be quite nice I just don't like the really plasticky plasticky pearls here's another package of the purple I mean, I might end up with so much stuff that I end up listing some of this stuff for sale. <laughs> um, I mainly sell the jewelry on eBay, but I also have an Etsy store where I put some of my craft supplies and the pieces that I make, some of my beaded macrame pieces. So, we shall see. Oh, that's a nice lot. We got the pearls, the kind of the white opal beads. And some amber beads. And, yep. Still got tons. <laughs> I don't think a lot's looked that big online. I don't know. <laughs> she was saying the other day she's trying to sell off her remaining bead supplies. And now she's got a bead store again. Yeah. That's how it happens. You see something you like and it's like, wow, that's nice. Let me bid on that. Next thing you know, you just won 20 lots of beads. <laughs> Slight exaggeration, but. Um, this bundle, I'll probably put this all 
online. I don't really do the tiny seed beads anymore. I am just have a hard time, you know, they're so small. My hand-eye coordination and eyesight just aren't what they used to be. Some of the bigger seed beads you can use as spacers between the larger beads. But these are nice. These are brand new tubes of glass beads. These are the Czech glass seed beads. Very nice. And yeah, look how tiny. That's not happening. And I got the white. So I might just lock these up. There you go. Let me check glass seed beads. Yeah, I'll probably just lot do this lot right back online because I don't think I'd be using these. So tiny. I mean, they're beautiful. Don't get me wrong. This is what I used to use all the time. I used to use crazy tiny, tiny beads. Oh, let me show you my portfolio real quick. Yeah, here's some of my own work. That I used to do tiny beads, tiny beads, tiny beads. That one's in a book, actually. Tiny beads. <laughs> so I love the tiny beads. I just, I just can't use them anymore. Um, some white opaque. I mean, look how tiny. I can't even see these. Let's focus. Come on. There we go. White pearl. I mean, this size I might keep, or this tube I might keep because they're the size eight seed beads. So they're a little bit bigger and you can use these as spacers between larger beads. And because I've got all these two packs of the purple beads, I'll probably keep the purple tube of seed beads because it'll be perfect for spacers. So I lie, I'm not selling them all. <laughs> uh oh more seed beads but these are the bigger ones so I might keep a lot of these smaller ones like these too tiny size 11 be selling those but these are what size are these yeah these are the size 6 come on let's focus the size 6 Oh, and see, I think they call those e beads also. Those are quite, I mean, compared to the tiny size 11, these are pretty big. These are great spacer beads. Again, you know, see how all these colors, yeah, keeping those. Um, yellow, I'll have to see if I've got other yellow beads. Personally, not a huge fan of yellow. Um, so I forgot if I have other yellow beads that might work well as a spacer bead. Uh, those are eight O's. Those look tiny. Oh, eight O, not six O. Yeah, six O's are okay. Like these are six O's and turquoise. Oh, one of my favorite colors. Keepers. It's like the greasy turquoise, you know. I love that color. And these, come on. Why are you not focusing? There we go. But I think this is the same color. So I might keep a tube and sell a tube because how many tubes of beads does one person need? camera those are yellow tiny seed beads I'm gonna sell those see this pile I'll be listed online and here's some uh, mixture oh they call it peppermint mix kind of all shades of uh, green kind of pearlescent silver line those are a keeper. Yeah, those look nice together. And of course I'm keeping these. Is it like the gunmetal hematite color? Uh, 
a uh, more of the six size six in a red mixture. What are they call this Royal Ruby mix. Ooh, these are giant ones. Or are these size three? Twos. Yeah, these big honkers definitely keeping. They're all silver line, multicolor, um, really quite big as far as seed beads go. Definitely keeping those. And another tube of the yellow, putting those straight into uh, the sale pile because I already have a tube saved. And like I said, I don't do a lot with yellow, so I think I only need one tube for myself. And, whew, I'm about a third of the way done. No, two thirds done. Let's see, I got this bundle and then a bunch more. And I know people, like I said, people sell jewelry bundles, you know, with kind of the, the broken or the, um, broken items or things missing rhinestones but I thought if I'm gonna make jewelry what I really need are a lot of the components you know like the chains and the beading wire and I think somewhere in this lot there's a bunch of clasps and head pins so that that's why I wasn't so keen on bidding on the mixed craft lots um these are Mickey Delicas, which I used to use. They are wonderful, very uniform size beads. Um, really great for making patterns, uh, different patterns. But they're just so tiny, I won't use them. So those are going right into the sale pile. Oh, I got a couple good with good bags here. Looks like I've got all my pieces parts. So here's the first bag. Oh, I've got more of the beading wire. Cool. So. Point one A. It's pretty thin. Hmm. I think I always used to use a thicker wire. So. I'll figure it out. So I got a spool of the silver, a spool of the dark gold, and now it looks like a spool of the light gold. And I don't even know what all this stuff is. Oh, I know. I got a bunch of the big, um, not Pandora beads, but you know the beads with the big holes, the glass beads with the silver lining, the glass holes. I think that's, um, no, no, these are class. Read the package first before I start opening my mouth. <laughs> to a class. Oh, those are huge. That's kind of cool. Nice. Uh, some lobster class. Those are good for making bracelets. So, you know, you cut your length of chain for your bracelet, put a jump ring on both sides, and attach a lobster class or whatever class we want to use to one of the jump rings. Headphones, two inch, yahoo! So these are perfect. So these are what I plan on doing the little loops, you know, where you put a little stack of beads and then you do the little loop de doo. <laughs> and so you can do the loop right on directly on the chain. So I was thinking of doing the loop separate and then putting a um, jump rings on them and then attaching, but that's not as secure. The jump rings could come undone. If you do the wire wrap loop directly on the chain, that makes it a lot more secure. So, we shall see what I end up doing. And loads of more class, toggle class. That's a nice size for bracelets. Ooh, lots of toggle class. Silver tone, six toggle class. Times two. It's like 12. Yeah, I'm going to have enough to open a bead store. Bead caps. Oh, this is when you're doing like strands of beads and then you want to end it and do your clasp. So I've got a set of the gold tone and a set of the silver tone. 
you know, if you're doing a necklace with multi strands, you kind of hide the strands all in the bead cap. Ooh, fancy head pins. These are the ones that have the little, they look like sterling, but they aren't. 12 bead pins. Nice. And bigger class, these are better size for necklaces. And what are they, two strand? One strand. Five toggle clasps. Oh, double strand, yep. Let's see, the two loops. And then I've got this bag. Looks like I've got more beading wire in here. More of all the, what do they call this stuff? The findings, the jewelry findings, the head pins, the clasps, the crimps. Jewelry wire. So this is just a different brand. The other wires were all Beetleon. This is Darice, D-A-R-I-C-E. But the same, like this is just a partial spool, but the same thickness. I have wire forever. Won't have to buy any more wire. And this is nice, little silver tone. Spicer beads, they're nice to put in between larger beads. 204. Wow, 240? I mean, look how tiny. <laughs> hmm. Might sell these because they're so tiny. I mean, although they make good spacers, I don't know if I'm going to get aggravated trying to use them. Um, yeah, so I guess I'll make some earrings too because I've got all the head pins and the chains and um, just do some simple, just, you know, stacked beads or whatever. I've got all these different types of beads. So here's some kind of frosted uh, or matte gold tone French hook wires, 30 ear wires, so that's 15 pairs. Yeah, I say, if you just add up all these packages, it's like a ton of a lot of stuff. Some more bead caps, a set of gold. Uh, oh, no, they're all silver. There you go. I have to see. I might sell the bead caps. I'm not sure if I'm going to do any multi-strand project that wasn't really the um style i was going for but you never know never say never here's some more toggle clasp eight toggle clasp kind of a antique silver tone metal another good size for bracelets now here's some of these more of these giant hook clasps two hook clasps so now i've got two packages and another package of these Said I wasn't planning on making this much jewelry, so I might end up <laughs> listing quite a bit of this on um, Etsy. Here's some gold tone jump rings. This is a good size for when you're making bracelets. Um, oh, this is so faded. 150 jump rings. I don't think you can see it. Tiny, tiny jump rings. Some fancy gold tone head pins with the, like the little bead end, bead cap in the end. Very nice, 16. And this is kind of like almost a gunmetal, no, head and eye pin. So the difference is when it's flat, like a regular pin, see how it's flat? They call those head pins when it's got the loop, they call those eye pins. So if you're doing a little bead stack with an eye pin, you can attach the stacks together because now you've got this loop on one end and you can put a jump ring in between to attach the different stacks. I'm gonna be having so many ideas. Here's some larger jump rings and the other pack were smaller gold tone. These are larger silver tone, 135. Again, I can use these with necklaces and bracelets. And another pack of the kind of gunmetal head and eye pins. So many. Well, it's good because I think these aren't quite as nice as some of these fancy ones. So I haven't done these little wire wrap loops in a while. I'll do a couple practice tries before I ruin the good ones. <laughs> um, 
yeah. And I did just get a new set of tools, finally. Man, for all the art and craft projects I've done throughout the years, I've never really had good tools. I've had like a set of pliers here, and I don't know. I end up using my hands a lot, fingers a lot, and crapping out my fingernails. But I actually have a proper set of tools. Um, I showed that in one of the jewelry supply unboxings. Um, small order I got from Rings and Things. But here's the case. That's another thing I never had. This is like a great traveling case for on-the-go projects. And you open it up. And this is pretty affordable. Um, some of the plier sets were like $100, $200. That's crazy. We've got the cutters, the chain nose, or the um, round nose, the flat nose, the chain nose the bent chain nose, and then the crimping pliers for when you're using this type of jewelry wire, you finish it off with crimps, these little metal tubes, and you have to smush the crimp onto the wire to secure the your pieces in place. So I'm ready. <laughs> So right now we're going to do this baggie. Oh, I'm to see loose to the beads. Tiny. That's going in my sale pile. Look at all this stuff. Yeah, I'm going to make a bracelet or two. <laughs> hmm. I did have a bead store years ago. Years and years and years and years ago. I loved having it. It was just, um, I don't know. It was a different point in my life. So here's these, what I call the Pandora style beads. I've got a whole bunch of these. These are by Hildy and Joe and all different kinds. So I'm not going to do like the Pandora style where you put it, all the beads on like a big silver or gold chain. I plan on doing these little kind of beaded charms. So I'll put smaller beads on either side of this so I can put it on a head pin or through the beading wire. Uh, yeah, so I'll be able to make tons of projects. So that's gold tone. Then I, I understand they set, sell these sets to coordinate with one another, but, um, or I could just make these all into charms and then dangle them from the chain because it is all coordinated to work together. Yeah, I guess these are glass and metal. I've seen they, I went online on the Amazon, I saw somebody, must have been a manufacturer in a different country, was selling these for dirt cheap, and then I realized they're plastic. Nothing wrong with plastic, um, but it's not the look I'm going for. I just like the feel of glass better. Um, yeah. Bates, 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 everywhere. I'm running out of room. Hang on. Let's see. I'm getting quite a pile. And then I have to figure out what to do with all this. Because <laughs> now my whole desk, my workspace is all uh, jammed up with all these supplies. I have to see if I've got some empty tote that I can put this all in. Got to stay organized. Yep. And so, you know, this stuff you can coordinate with all these other beads. You know, if I'm making the little loops, I can mix and match other types and other colors. So. And two more in this bin. So I had one of these already. And for the most part, these are all different colors. Pretty cool. I don't like doing production work. When I used to make uh, the beaded jewelry, I very, very rarely did the same design or the same kind of piece. Um, I don't know. It's kind of like one and done. 
Maybe because I get bored easily. Eh. Might have had more success if I did production work, but that's not me. That kind of, um, you know, just keep the creative juices flowing. I kind of like to do different things all the time. So here's another bag of these Hildy and Joe metal line beads. And I see some of the colors are starting to repeat. So I'll decide if I want to put some of these for sale too. Maybe keep one package for myself and then sell the other package of the same color. Don't know. I don't know where to put this all. And I got the black and more of these gold tone. Kind of amber tortoiseshell look. And then I already have some of these and I got more of the white. So definitely probably sell some of the white. And another pink. Let's see, I could work this stuff into a piece. These are all coordinate well. Um, you've been using some of these. Already planning projects. <laughs> so I've got this bag and then I've got two storage containers of stuff. I don't know what's in there. I'm assuming that's like the pieces parts for whoever got rid of this bundle that the storage containers have open packages, whereas everything so far has been unopened packages. So I don't know if this was a jewelry store or somebody that just like did the craft shows or sold online. Just clearing out uh, a little strand of pale blue glass beads. Another strand of the pink crystal roundels. Oops, looks like there's some works and projects. I see loose beads are broken. Broken strands of beads. Two strands of the red crystal rondelles and this big hank of multicolor, multi-sized red beads. Uh, oh. Let's say, is this a hank of seed beads? But it looks like it's on a clasp um you can almost wear that as is right or it's on jump rings with yeah we just have to put a clasp i'll probably sell that these are katana yeah i've got this strand of gold tone crystal and then i think i have some broken ones no i've got these it feels like ceramic Rest feels like glass. Got this strand. And then I got a broken strand. Kind of multicolor purpley. Let me get a baggie real quick. Oops, got a baggie right here. Put all these loose ones in so they don't start going all over, or my cat might want to jump up on my desk and start batting them around. Oh, here's a broken bead. So, maybe they broke and fell on the floor. I can still use all these beads in projects. I've got a lot of other purple beads, so they will work well with purple. Purple, purple, purple. Okay. So, this is all I have left to go. These two, um, storage containers of I'm not sure what's in here oh one seed beads that actually looks brand new it hardly looks like it's been used this is a fantastic collection of size 11 glass seed beads in every color of the rainbow um, comes in a carrying case and then it's like Almost looks like Tic Tac containers full of beads. And like I said, it doesn't look like any 
hardly any were used. Um, I'm going to put this on my Etsy store. These bees are just too small and I just can't deal. I mean, beautiful, but um, that'll make a nice uh, little collection for someone. I don't even know where to put it. <laughs> Yeah, let's see what's in the last box. Oops, I got some loose stuff coming at me. It's terracotta mirror. And this just looks like some glass beads, different sizes. I can use these larger sizes, like the size 8 or the size 6. Um, there's some size 11 in here, but it's mostly the larger ones. So that's okay. That This will work as a good, you know, spacer beads for other projects. These are kind of neutral colors. Goes with just about anything. So, that's it. My, um, yeah, maybe I'll bid on a lot of, um, beads and craft supplies and make a bright sword or two. Mm-hmm. So that's me. <laughs> uh, yeah, but um, probably be selling, listing a lot of these size 11 C beads. I just don't really use them anymore. They're just so tiny, and I'll be listing this big lot. Let's see. I mean, this is just, like fantastic. Look at that. He has a whole bead collection. You want to start beading? Here you go. <laughs> and really happy with the number of jewelry findings. All the chains. The different class, the jump rings, the earring wires, the head pins, the eye pins, and tons of the beading wire. So I think I have enough to keep me busy for a while. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching my um, craft supply and beading unbundling. This is Lynn Smythe from The Creative Cottage. Um, have a great day. We'll see you later. Bye.